Unlimited Podcast. Welcome to Automated. I'm your host, Mark Verbenkov, and in this weekly podcast, we will be exploring the impact of emerging technology on jobs, society, as well as us, with business and technology leaders, researchers, and independent professionals across the world. Okay, so today's episode is going to be a little bit more on the speculative side of things, as currently there isn't that much information to gather for the topic, at least for now. So uh, I think it's actually only been mentioned on the podcast two times in the uh, almost 100 episodes that this podcast has been going for. And the idea is uh, that of the fully automated business. This is really where no human interaction is required for the entire enterprise to function. So we are right now starting to see kind of the initial examples of this in the tangible or physical world, but only really in part. Uh, You can think about things such as like uh, dark warehouses where various industrial robots can operate to kind of pick, transfer, and pack different packages uh, that are then placed onto uh, conveyor belts and moved to loading docks where they're then transported out. Uh, But other aspects of the business obviously need some form of human labor, such as the human drivers bringing the goods to and from the warehouses, at least for now. Uh, so other examples have been touched on in other podcasts as well. Uh, so I've had guests on talking about uh, their fully automated vertical farming modular systems or others where uh, entire drug discovery setups were predominantly automated. And then, of course, the eventual uh, level five autonomous vehicles have been discussed uh, a number of times. Um, but I've also heard of, uh, and this hasn't been touched on the podcast, of several small examples where individual entrepreneurs experiment with different platforms and products. And by outsourcing many of the business activities, are actually able to automate all of the business's processes. So um, to kind of envision, uh, when an order is placed typically on their online website, a set of automated processes begin to be carried out, such as sending the order to an overseas factory and uh, hiring of a freight forwarder to do the product shipping uh, and all the other kind of continuous steps after that. So though these businesses are fully automated, there are, of course, humans within the loop that are carrying out a lot of the activities needed to create, ship, transfer, and then finally deliver the product to the customer. I also have a small list of some other examples of these semi-fully automated uh, businesses in the show notes if you want to uh, look at them. But uh, generally speaking, at some point, uh, all of these kind of require some human presence or the operation will essentially fail. There are, however, a few digital fully automated businesses that actually already exist. Um, And as per my discussion with the futurist Matthew Griffin, uh, most, however, only really exist in the financial or the communication or marketing sectors currently. And uh, I personally think that the best examples exist in the financial sector. So ADIA is an example of a fully autonomous trading hedge fund. Its creators say that even if all of the founders were to die, it would actually still continue to do the trading and the activities that it was set up to do. Uh, The same is happening with another uh, smaller hedge fund called Tech Trader AI, which actually started trading in 2012. And it has been uh, completely autonomous with no human input, uh, no updates, completely unsupervised with an algorithm that actually mimics human-like trading um, and really not relying on other trading practices like high-frequency trading uh, or other computer-heavy actions. So though its creator has actually moved on, it continues to trade and even posts its trade on Twitter, if you're curious to see. So uh, these are two examples are part of really a larger trend of other hedge funds incorporating uh, artificial intelligence systems into their activities, moving more and more and more towards autonomous trading, I guess you could say departments. And this really ties into the larger idea of the capitalism of things, which I've spoken about before before, but it is worth re-exploring as I think it really nicely dovetails into the fully automated business uh, ideas 
and I think also paints a really interesting future scenario of where this is most probably going to lead as these technologies develop. So the capitalism of things can be understood by breaking it down into kind of three successive layers. The first can be seen through the emergence of new networking technologies, which has created task-based work. Think of platforms like Fiverr or Upwork, where you can hire freelancers to take on specific tasks, like develop a logo, translate an article, edit a video, etc. This has really enabled large projects to be broken down and distributed across multiple individuals. Artificial intelligence has pushed this facilitating those best suited to complete those actions to be paired with those needing the service without an intermediary to make the connection like all other previous times. Someone needing a logo designed can be guided to the designer that suits the price, time, and quality needs through these online platforms. Also, you can think of uh, Uber connecting a driver with a passenger without the need to call on a central agency and arrange a pickup. So second, uh, when more autonomous systems are in place, humans are removed from the production side of the equation. For example, uh, looking at Uber again, the passenger will be the only human in their interaction once Uber adopts autonomous vehicles, which um, it has been looking into heavily, of course. Uh, and when this happens, both the driver as well as the matchmaker will be autonomous systems, and only the consumer, the passenger in this case, will be the human. And the third layer is where the capitalism of things is truly introduced. So here, smart objects and systems exchange value and trade services autonomously. Uh, the example that I used before when this was talked about uh, was agriculture. So you can think about uh, sensors that are being placed around crops and they detect the ripeness of the crop and they relay that data to autonomous harvesters like the ones that are being tested in California right now. And then, of course, there's an industrial process, probably using some sort of industrial robot that can package uh, the food, and then it is essentially shipped to the uh, retail stores through autonomous vehicle. At least that's the idea. Uh, but I think that the part here that is interesting is that many stores now are already using sensors to determine when levels of products are low or empty. Um, and that data is then transmitted to have the stocks replenished. Uh, without the use of employees scanning barcodes in any aisles. So in this example, the store, the transportation system, and the farm are actually communicating and exchanging value and goods autonomously. So the same principle is actually being tested in smart homes and will certainly be a key to certain aspects of future cities. Smart kitchens and cabinets could interact directly with Amazon or other goods providers and request a stock up of household products from toilet paper to lettuce or shampoo without any human request being included in that loop. Quite like the experimental entrepreneurs and their uh, automated businesses, as I mentioned before, uh, these sorts of ideas will be just kind of um, expanded in most or many different parts of society. So agriculture and homes are but two examples, but as I just mentioned, the idea of capitalism of things is that these uh, smart self-communicating systems could really interact in most industries. And I think perhaps the most interesting thing here is that they could actually account for a greater value of economic transactions than those done by individual humans. But that's really dependent um, on if the systems uh, in place, of course, work as designed. So this, of course, is rather speculative and is definitely not going to be implemented tomorrow. But from the examples that I talked about at the, at the beginning uh, and the technologies that have been discussed on the podcast already, um, these things are starting to happen, at least in the early stages. There are, of course, um, considerable concerns about the privacy, security, and regulatory issues, um, and all of these are far from dealt with. But nevertheless, I think it's a really interesting idea that has hints of taking shape today, builds upon the idea of the fully automated businesses uh, that has been discussed in this episode and previous ones, and um, I think is quite an interesting vision or scenario for the future in many parts of the uh, advanced world. Well, that's it for this week's episode. Thanks for listening. 
If you like what you hear and you want to support the podcast and the conversations here, the best way to do this is to go on to Apple Podcasts and leave a review as it helps the algorithm to reach out to new listeners and brings the show to them. Also, feel free to check out the website, automatedpodcast.org, where you can find the show notes for each episode, written articles on the themes of the podcast, and a library of resources on the topic of emerging tech and automation. Also, if you want to reach out and leave any feedback or you have any questions about the podcast or any of the conversations, there are general contact links such as email, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. for you there on the website. And finally, for those of you that want more than just an audio conversation, the video recordings are now going to be up on YouTube for the newer conversations. So feel free to check out the videos by searching for Automated Podcast on YouTube, where, of course, you can like and subscribe if you prefer to support the podcast that way. The Automated Podcast.